Uh, Irvin Cooper was a very influential uh, surgeon who, who, you know, in the 1930s and 40s, uh, you know, began to perform what was sort of the, 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 the principal uh, uh, treatment for, for Parkinson's disease at the time, which was, was not what we think of today as basal ganglia surgery. It really was a, sort of a pure or a pyramidal motor surgery. And what they would do is they would sort of sneak under the temporal lobe, which is a view here, and they would cut the peduncle, the cerebral peduncle. And, and as you can imagine, this would paralyze patients. Um, but at the time, that was really the only treatment that was available. Uh, patients with Parkinson's disease, uh, you know, at that time, had, would have, the, the, of those who had very severe tremor, had terrible tremor. It was completely debilitating. They couldn't sleep. They couldn't sit still. They were, they were always shaking. And so the paralysis that would be produced by that procedure was preferable to, uh, to, to, to no treatment. Um, and, and so it happened on one particular day that he describes in this book, if any of you are interested, the, this book, The Vital Probe, is uh, his biography. And, it, and it's really, um, it, it's, it's both a, a, an interesting review of, of what surgery was in that era, but it's, it's interesting to hear from the person who sort of pioneered these surgeries uh, a bit about his creative process and, and sort of how dogged he had to be to get this accepted by, by neurosurgery and neurology at the time. Uh, but on this particular day, he was doing this procedure, uh, and he describes that he accidentally uh, injured the anterior choroidal artery, and knowing a little bit about the, the blood supply to the brain, said, well, may maybe that will be helpful, uh, and went ahead and ligated the artery and didn't do any more, didn't do the treatment, and just pulled out. And uh, sure enough, that particular patient, um, uh, you know, had a, a remarkable recovery, woke up, was actually doing fine, didn't have any significant deficit, but had complete cessation of their tremor while still having good function of the hand. And we know today that he got a little bit lucky in that because the anterior cortical artery has a, you know, it has a variable uh, blood supply to the brain, but in the, in the best cases, it can, you know, it, it, here's a, you can see here the territories, it can produce, a, in, a, in patients with a small anterior cortical territory, it can produce a relatively focal lesion in the basal ganglia, perhaps in the thalamus, or perhaps in the pallidum. And in either case, that can be useful in, in reducing tremor. It was probably a small pallidotomy that he had performed. He went on to perform quite a few of these. So actually, if you read the book, it's 3,000 of these surgeries that he performed before he decided that, well, it, it sometimes worked well, but often it did not. And he shifted toward sort of semi-stereotactic approaches, uh, sort of done you know, freehand, but with, with x-rays, to, to make lesions in the thalamus and, and perform thalamotomy surgery. Um, so that was pretty innovative. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.